let's actually do some markdown. Um, when the video chat starts, it would be great if you could go to the chat. That's true. I asked them to help me keep the chat relevant. So we'll see. Um, that's the hard part about having a studio audience, right? They like to have fun and they should be able to have fun. And please make a comment. If you have any comments to make about how, the use of Markdown, please make those. Oh, yeah, there we go, Alexander. That's a great comment. All right. So how do we do this? All right. The first thing I need to do is get you on to github.com. There are separate videos about how and why to use github.com. I am not going to talk about it now. It's just too much information. Go to your GitHub account and log in. And once you log in, we're going to make a repository. Now, we already went through how to make a repository. You can have one that has notes on there. If you want to use that same repository, or you can make a new one. It's totally up to you. Feel free, experiment. You're not going to break anything, right? So I'm going to go into my notes, and I am going to look at my notes thing. And you're like, there's going to be at least one person out there that's going to be like, why are we using GitHub to take notes and learn Markdown? The answer, my friends, is that you haven't learned the terminal yet, okay? And I want to go over Markdown and making a basic website before we get too far along in this beginner boost so that you can start taking advantage of using Markdown for why it was invented by a writer to take notes and to share data with others. You can start using Markdown today. There is no textbook for the beginner boost. There is your code book, your notes. And so you are the one writing your own book. You'll be able to remember it better. You'll be able to search it better. You'll know where it is. You can add stuff to it later. Um, I don't think I swore, but okay. You can use it to your to the fullest extent the way you want to use it. So that's why we are covering this at this time. So we will come back and we'll you'll learn how to do it from the command line or with VS Code or whatever way you want to do it. So somebody out there is like, well, why are we using GitHub? This is a very inefficient way to do it. It actually isn't. It's pretty nice. So the first thing I want you to see here is that when you open up your repo, um, let's actually pretend like we don't have this repo. Let's go ahead and delete the repo. In fact, let's go ahead and delete this repo and recreate it. There's really nothing wrong with that. We're going to go delete it. Uh, I want to take you all the way through the steps. Uh, it says, I want to delete this repo. Uh, and unexpected. I have read. Yes. Okay. So I have to actually type it in. RBX Rob at GH test one. I have just so that I, whoops. Uh oh, do I have to use my security key? All right, I think I have a security key set up. Let me go check really quick. I want to make sure. It, um, yeah, actually, use phone tablet security key back. Use this one here. Where are you? Um, I use a I use what's called a UB key uh, for security. So I have to touch it if you're gonna do a thing. Okay, so here we go. So back to main. So here here's your your empty site. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to click on new and we're going to make a new one. Let's call it, um, uh, <laughs> there you go. You could call it whatever you want here. Um, I mean, you could, if you want to, you could say markdown tutorial, right? Or you could just say notes. Let's do, let's do notes. Uh, let's say notes. Let's say, uh, random, uh, notes about stuff I'm, uh, learning. Let's actually make it private. I don't really want people to see it. We, there's another video about why and when you might want to do that. Um, if you do it as a readme, if you add a readme to it, then it automatically makes you the readme file. Uh, we don't need a license, so create repository. Rob deletes GitHub by mistake. <laughs> so here we go. Random notes about learning stuff. As you can see, it already added some stuff. We're going to click on the little uh, pencil icon over here. And you see you already have some stuff. And this is not really well. I'm going to zoom in 250% so you can see a little bit better. Um, but as you can see, here's the name. You can change the name up here if you want. Um, that's also the way to add a new file, I found out. Uh, this is not completely obvious. But um, uh, if you wanted to add a new thing here, it's like you could say sample MD. Um, and if you say something like that, you can say... Um, uh, you know, like headers, we're going to do all this in a second here, headers here, um, and, and stuff. And let's go ahead and scroll down and where's my save? Where's my, oh, commit. 
it's commit changes, which you would never commit this often, my friends. Um, <laughs> you would never normally do this. This is if you're when we get to GitHub, this is the kind of committing to main and all this stuff. There's at least one person who's going to be like, oh, my God, you're encouraging people to commit to main all the time. We're just using this as kind of a way to save. You don't know about the intricacies of Git yet, and you don't need to know that right now. You're just using it as a way to save. You'll notice that it actually shows you the preview, and you click on code, and you get the actual code. Um, you can see what you know, who changed what and when, but those are all things for later. Um, if you want to go back and edit the same file, you can click here. Um, if you click on the notes directory now, you'll see uh, we're kind of zoomed in too much. Let's go back out a little bit. There we go. Um, here you can see that there's more than one file. There's the readme, which is automatically, actually, I renamed it by changing the name. Um, and, you know, you can add new files. You can add a file here. You can upload a file if you want. Uh, you can actually upload pictures. If you take, if you take a screenshot, for example, during your, during your, you know, whatever you're doing here, you can take a screenshot and you can upload your screenshot in here. And we'll show you how to do that. Um, in fact, I'm trying to keep this video short. We're going to try to do all of basic markdown in one go. Um, there's not a lot you have to really learn here. And again, I, I'm not going to give you a link to a book about it. I'm going to help you make your own book. All right, so let's go through the sample and let's click on this little edit the file thing here and we'll go through them all. So the, the first thing is he headers. So headers, um, if you know Markdown, you know that there's many ways to do headers. Um, and I'm going to help you by simplifying a few things. So the thing to keep in mind here is that you can use uh, one uh, hashtag uh, for for main header, um, sorry, heading. They're headings, not headers. They're heading. Let me use the terminology that's going to match HTML. Um, headings. So one for main heading, um, and then uh, you could do. Actually, let's just do this. Let's say uh, one for main heading, and let's just make an example of this. Um, uh, two for uh, secondary heading, um, three for uh, third level. And I'm not using H1 and H3 on purpose. You're going to see how these translate later. Um, uh, and then, let's see, you could actually say, uh, I don't know how to do this. Let's say a four, fourth level. Uh, but don't don't use this. Don't. It's not really useful. It doesn't really show up differently. Uh, and five, uh, fifth level. There's actually six. Um, seriously, past this, it, there's really very little differentiation. Um, sixth level. Um, so. Really, the main ones you're going to use is this and this. Um, um, uh, usually, usually it is best to, to keep uh, the main heading as as the first uh, line of the document, um, so that it can be easily. Uh, parsed uh, out of the file and I use this all the time this is a technique that I use um, second um, uh, main uh, division of content within uh, a given document uh, this is usually uh, usually best to only have a single uh, main heading per document. And this is not required, but it's generally a good idea. Um, and okay, so it's second level there, third level main division of content within a document. Um, uh, really the smallest uh, heading uh, that is practical in most, uh, in most cases. Um, down here, um, not easily uh, distinguishable in, in, 
in by most uh, by most um, renderers re renderers uh, by the way never <laughs> never use um, headings uh, as uh, for formatting um, so there's something called semantic uh, meaning which I'll make a video on separately let me just make a note to make a video about that. Um, uh, so let's talk about that. Let's take a well, I'm going to make an extra video. Uh, what is semantic? Uh, and why do I care? <laughs> so I'll make a video about that. But um, in a nutshell, semantic is when you use a thing uh, to distinguish meaning as opposed to formatting. And that is not completely the accurate definition of the word, but still. Um, so here we go. Headings for formatting. Now, we haven't been previewing this while we're going. We could just click over here on preview, and you can see this stuff changing. This is why we're using GitHub. So GitHub has got this really amazing um, built-in previewer. Uh, so you can go back and forth between the previewer and and you can see um and and i think that that's the way to go um because especially if you're just beginner right but as you can see after the second level things kind of trail off right so the standard github rendering of this and by the way the rendering the rendering of github is completely dependent on the renderer right um i do like to use the github uh rendering as a guide somewhat for my decisions about how this is generally going to appear in other documents. Um, but you know, there's other places that would render it differently. So that is, it's GitHub is a pretty good, you know, this, this is one of the main reasons I use this previewer because you can get a good sense of what most people think something should look like. Um, but the idea of Markdown is to disconnect, um, the importance and the meaning of the content, you know, the different parts of content from its appearance. Um, so that if you're, you know, if you're on a screen like this, you know, you, you can make color distinctions where you can't necessarily make size distinctions in the font, for example. This is one of the main advantages of Markdown is because it allows you to provide uh, a way of signaling uh, to the tool that's being used to consume the content, a way of, of, to say, hey, you need to display this part of the content differently depending on how it's being displayed, whether it's in a tech terminal that where everything's the same font size or you're, you're on a big screen or whatever, right? Um, so that's the point. So, and as you can see, the first level heading, the second level heading, and the third level heading uh, are really the only distinctions. After that, it's like, is that a header? I can't really tell. It absolutely is because you see this little link over here. So GitHub automatically makes it so that you can click on this and you can get up here. See, look at that. You get an actual link. This is called a local link and it will, it will go directly to that part of your notes. Yet another reason to use Markdown on GitHub for your notes is you can refer to other areas in your notes automatically and you can take the immediate advantage of using the World Wide Web as God, you know, God being Tim Berners-Lee, intended. Um, three of the th uh, third or third level, not really the smartest, fourth level, fifth level, sixth level. So there are no more than six levels. Now, it's important that I at least mention to you, if you're going to do this, that there is another way to use headings, and I'm just going to tell you, don't do it, okay? So we're going to make a little thing here. Uh, just say just say no to the other types of headings um, of headings and this is actually the this is one of these times when markdown gives you multiple ways of doing something um, so that the writer can exercise artistic license and how they want to write it and you really didn't need that and this is this is we, we talked about you know html being created by scientists you know there's one specific way for something and then, you know, Markdown is being created by artists and writers. And so there's usually multiple ways of doing something. And the truth is you really want the middle of ground of that. You don't want to get into the habit of, you know, using different ways to do headings because it complicates the parsing. It complicates and it's more for you to remember at the very least. Um, and it also can 
if you, if you want to write your own parser, which is really fun, um, you know, it simplifies the parser that you'll end up writing because there's only one way to parse a heading, for example. So uh, when we talk about simplified common mark, we're going to be talking about that specific thing. We are going to simplify some of these decisions. And one of those decisions is headings. So there is another way to do a heading and I'm going to just show it to you, but I am not going to put it in here. If I wanted to do this heading instead of this, this is 100% valid. This is another way to do this heading. Looks kind of cool, huh? It does, right? Try to parse that though, man. <laughs> it's really, let's see if it previews it right. Yep, it previews it right. Um, I forget the name of this. I don't think it's ATX. I think ATX headers are the ones with the, the hashtag. Just use the hashtag. Um, don't use that. There's, there's, there's two forms that are supported, uh, that or the single dash, and this, this is the H2. Um, there are some parsers and tools out there that explicitly forbid the use of headings using that method. So I strongly encourage you not to do that. Uh, and now you know what types those are. Um, those, you, let's see, I'm going to put using uh, a or, um, okay, so just don't use the other ones. Let's preview that. As you can see, we've already got a little bit of mark down there. We're going to get to that. Um, I got to go faster through this though. So let's go ahead and commit these changes. Uh, just go ahead and commit it. And now the notes about headings are done. So we've covered headings. Um, I, I wonder if we should break down this video and have, um, and have these be different. And we should have different video on each one of these. What do you guys think? It's probably important to do that. Two, three, four. Let's do that. Um, headings. Um, Let's do headings. Uh, yeah. Learn headings. Uh, this I don't know. I, I, I thought this was going to be like a four-hour video. <laughs> so, uh, what do you guys think? Learn. Uh, mark down. Let's see. Common mark. Mark down headings. All right. Let's let's do that. I'm going to end the video there and and um, and. Um, we're going to we're going to do the next one. So